Welcome back to The Division 2. In this video, I want to talk to you about loot and basically put context behind how long it's actually going to take you to find the required pieces to put together a good build. And because of that, I feel that the loot does need pretty much a complete overhaul all over again. Because title update 10 was supposed to be more power to the player, loot generosity, and there's just been a, it's been a big shambles the whole way through. As an example, we were going for a Hana Yu backpack for a skill build, and because that crash bag can only drop with a red mod slot, it has made it incredibly hard to find. We spent five hours looking for two, didn't even find one, or not one that was good enough to put into a build. Another example is the Seska backpack that can only roll with a blue mod slot, so you have to find pretty much the perfect pieces so that you can change them mod slots to the colour that you need them. So when you are looking for builds, you're obviously going to start with brands, because once you've got the brand set sorted for like crits and weapon damage, skill damage, skill haste and things like that, to put examples behind it, if you're going for an Araldi chest for the marksman rifle damage, if you go for the chest targeted loot, like if you're just going random, the chances are all over the place. But if you go for the chest targeted loot, you have a 1 in 21 chance of getting that to drop because there are currently 21 brand sets in the game. So if you then instead go for the Araldi targeted loot, you should have a 1 in 6 chance, but it never ever works like that because for some reason the backpacks and the chests seem to drop way less. We must have done three or four control points, the ones outside capital building, with some activities in between, and I probably found one Hannah Yu backpack. That's all I got to see. I was having holsters and knee pads and masks and gloves and stuff drop, but barely ever would I get a backpack. So even if you are going for specific brand targeted loot, you should have a 1 in 6 chance because of there being 6 different gear pieces for that brand. But it never seems to work like that. It's, it's always a much lower chance because the masks and stuff drop a lot more often. So if you do get a chest, let's just say you're going for a roldy, you get a chest. And there are 3 different attribute colours. So you can get 1 blue and 1 yellow or 1 red and 1 blue. Also with the chest and the backpacks you need to be looking for talents. So it makes your chances of finding the perfect piece even smaller, with the mod slot to make that even worse, on some of the pieces. Some of them are fine, but then if you look at some of the brand sets, they'll have like one bonus for like one piece for a red build, and then two and three will be for a blue build, or something like that. So you're literally just, is grind, 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 farm, farm, farm. That's all this game is, because your chances are so low. With a Hana Yu backpack, instead of the Eroldi chest, you have the same drop chances. A 1 in 21 if you just go for the backpack targeted loot. Should be a 1 in 6 if you go for the Hana Yu targeted loot. But you have to get this backpack to roll with both attributes yellow, or one yellow and the right talent that you're looking for, or even perfect if you want to get rid of the red mod slot that's fixed on that piece of gear. I believe gear should have a fairly balanced chance of dropping, but that is not the case with standard gear and even the exotics in the game. Out of the last 10 exotics I've had drop, at least 5 of them have been Sawyer's knee pads, and Pete's getting the exact same thing. So it's literally like there is a list of all the different loot you can get, so moving on to exotics now, you've got all of the exotics in a loot pool, and some of them just generally have a much bigger chance of dropping. The other common ones alongside the Sawyer's knee pads are the Sweet Dreams, the Liberty Pistol, and the Tardigrade Chest. When you're playing on heroic difficulty, the, like, I think it's pretty much any part through a mission, you do have a chance, I think, I believe it's a 9% or a 7% chance on heroic difficulty of getting an exotic to drop. It doesn't seem to be the case. Like, there's only a couple of missions I've ever known that will drop exotics, like, right at the beginning or halfway through. Bank headquarters being one of them. I've seen a couple of pestilence drops, like, pretty much the first area of that mission. I did also, at the very end of American History Museum, not off the boss, off a random enemy at the end, I did get a Liberty Pistol. But it's mainly off the end boss. You do have a chance to get an exotic to drop, and when they do drop, it just always seems to be Sawyer's Knee Pads, Sweet Dreams, Liberty Pistol, or the Tardy Grade Chest. Even though you have the ability to get the Merciless, the Chameleon, all of the other Year 1 exotics, and I believe the Year 2 ones are currently in the loot pools as well. But it just seems as though they have a much lower chance of dropping, and that shouldn't be the case. I believe it should be more balanced. It just seems as though there is like no fair chance of getting your loot and getting it with the roll percentages on top of that. Like your chances are down to a bare minimum of getting your required piece. 
So even if you are going for that Hanayu backpack and you do get two yellows and the talent you want, you might not be able to take the red mod slot off because even playing on heroic difficulty, you might get skill damage and skill haste on there. Your skill haste might be fairly high, but your skill damage might only be 6 or 7% or something. And you're obviously going to want to push that higher instead of going like and taking the red mod slot off. So you have to like prioritize what you're doing with it. And like they said that gear 2.0 would simplify things and it really doesn't seem that way because it takes so long to get the required pieces you need. And then once you've got them, you still need to find more and more and more to try and perfect those pieces. And then what puts the icing on the cake for all of the loot is that rainbow drops have plagued the loot pools. And I believe there's going to be chances of us seeing unicorn guns shooting out cats in a near future update. It literally gets that crazy. Like, that's the sort of loot you have in this game. Like, rainbow drops are so, so common. Even on legendary difficulty. On a serious note though, ignoring the rainbows and taking the unicorns out of the equation, the minimum roll percentages for each of the difficulties are so unbalanced. And I've noticed, I've actually read through Twitter a lot of times, and developers only ever play the game on challenging because it has a better balance of reward for the time and effort put in. So you'll rarely ever see a developer actually playing and testing heroic difficulty because like they know the drops don't seem to be rewarding enough for heroic and even legendary. Another thing is they've also removed the minimum roll for difficulties, meaning that you can play on story difficulty and get a better rolled exotic than what you can on legendary. They did that a little while ago and I just personally don't touch a story normal or hard unless if I'm running the invasion to clear it for the stronghold each week, I'll just put them missions. I mean, a lot of the time I do it on challenging just to get it over and done with. But sometimes I will, if I'm in a rush, I'll just play it on normal just to get through those missions. But other than that, I don't touch those lower end difficulties because me as a player and my builds, I know that I can get through the higher difficulties. So I always play on the higher end of things and I know just how bad this loot is and the fact that it does need changing in some way. So your RNG percentages absolutely suck on this game, and the chance of a good roll is even lower. The loot definitely needs looking at, and I do have a possible kind of like solution as to what they can do. Like it, it would require reworking the entire system, so it would be a long, long process. It's not something that would be so simple to do. But if they removed some of the, like, because they say they've got all these internal tools and they can check out all these statistics, they don't release them to the public. But if that is the case, I'm hoping they do have some sort of stats for how often brand sets are used within players. So if they remove some of the less used brand sets, and literally if you have Hannah Yu is for a utility, that crash bag, instead of dropping it with a red mod slot, drop it with a yellow. And then when you're going for Seska, because the first piece is for crit chance, but there are other brand set perks to that, so you're not always going to use it for a red build. Maybe allow it to drop with multiple different mod slots, instead of it being fixed to blue on the Seska backpack, have it so that it can drop with blue or red, because that way it doesn't remove any of the grinding and farming from the game, but you do have a better chance of getting the things you need, because I'm pretty sure, like, I, I understand that there's possibly a fear within the development team that if they do all this stuff and make it too easy for players to get builds put together then players are going to get bored but you've got to think we've done all the content there is to do in the game with absolutely no talk of any new content being released besides a raid possibly skyscraper mode in six months or something like whenever it's coming out there's nothing new for us to do so the players that are still playing are going through and they're grinding for their gear but I can guarantee they're going to have a much better time if it's easier for them to put their builds together. Even when you have a maxed build, you're still going to run missions to maybe test out other builds because you don't have to put so much time into one build. But not only that, they're going to feel powerful because they've got their build where they want it, so they'll just run missions for the fun of running missions. There's a, a lot of different balancing, but I believe if they do remove some of the less used brand sets... Like Gila Guard, I never personally used that one. I know a lot of people would do, but it's just an example. And like you've got the Yarl gear that's locked to the uh, dark zone, and there's a lot of different stuff in the game. And if they just removed, like brought some of it down, because before year two began, there were 16 brand sets, and then since then, they've released another five. So that's just more loot coming into the game. So it makes your chances even lower. And let's just say, for example, this game goes on for five years. By that time, we could have like 30 plus brand sets. It could be impossible 
to get your builds together. So I do believe they need to rework the systems and look into it a bit more. But then obviously developers have moved on and stuff. So it, it's a bit of a, like there's mixed opinions towards it. But I'm going to leave the video there. I'd like to know your guys' thoughts and stuff in the comments. So leave them down below. I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.